So today we'll be learning about macronutrients. And for anyone that doesn't know what macronutrients are, hopefully you uh, found that out from the vocab word, but if you already know what uh, macronutrients are, is NPK, which is nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And actually, when they're labeled on your fertilizer bags, they are N, as in nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, as in P, and potassium, as K, because the, uh, the elemental letter for potassium is K. And I know it seems a little weird, but uh, once you get used to it, it's, it's uh, not that odd. Um, and when you have a bag of fertilizer, you'll see a number, then a dash, then, a num then another number, then a dash, then another number. As you can see on this bottle of fish emulsion, you have the N, P, and K, as I just described. And now, as you can see, the nitrogen is obviously higher than the, potas or than the phosphorus and potassium. But, you still get some, you get some here. You'll always have some. Generally, they don't have just a 5, 0, 0. But when you get into um, more synthetic fertilizers, you will have like a 30, 0, 0, uh, which is generally not the best for your soil. And as you can see on this bag of bone meal, there is a 2, 14, 0. This is one of the only exceptions really to the zero rule because uh, bone meal is really, really high in, in phosphorus, but rarely has any potassium. So that's just a quick note if you need a quick boost of uh, phosphorus, which I'll explain the needs for uh, phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium uh, coming up really soon. So stay tuned and I'll zoom you back out so I can explain those. Now that you've seen kind of what some numbers look like, you can also uh, begin to troubleshoot your garden by looking for symptoms. Um, since nitrogen is basically one of your, your growth hormones for the plant, uh, it, will, it will stimulate growth very, very promptly if you put a lot of nitrogen in. And you'll see that because uh, it'll get very large very quick, it'll put out a lot of green growth, but you won't get a lot of fruit. Um, and that's because nitrogen's uh, only purpose to the plant really is to increase growth. And so, if you have a nitrogen deficiency, you will see a stunted plant, and it'll generally be a little thinner a stem. It won't have a lot of uh, muscle to it. Just imagine um, nitrogen being the protein or the uh, or the weightlifting portion of of one's work. Um, it it builds a lot of muscle to the plant, and so you generally will have a very green plant with a lot of growth. And then when you have a phosphorus deficiency, phosphorus is usually done uh, in the root section or the flower production portion of the plant's growth. And so if you have a phosphorus deficiency, you'll generally have, uh, rarely um, we notice it until it starts flowering um, because you can't really see what's going on underneath, underneath the soil, obviously, because it's roots. Um, but one way you can tell that you have a phosphorus deficiency is by checking the underside of the leaves. If you have a phosphorus deficiency, the underside of the leaves will be a pinkish to a purple tone. And that means that it's simply not taking up the, the uh, appropriate amount of water and nutrients um, in the root system, and so you'll generally get a uh, a anemic looking plant because imagine if someone's choking you and you're not getting the air uh, you know like just really choking you you're gonna turn red in the face uh, and it's because you're not getting proper air and so the plant itself will begin suffocating in the fact that it can't take up nutrients and stuff from the roots because it simply doesn't have the uh, phosphorus to take up the nutrients because well there's no roots um, and so you know, uh, another way you can tell is if you're just simply not getting a lot of flower production. A lot of people think that blossom end rot is due to calcium, and it is, but that's after the fruit has actually begun setting, um, and that's a calcium deficiency, which we'll get into later. Uh, but uh, the phosphorus deficiency will just, you'll just not have the flowers that you would normally be having. And so you can really increase the flower production by adding a little phosphorus. And the last macronutrient that I'm going to uh, briefly go over today 
is potassium. And potassium deals with the plants and uh, the way they produce uh, photosynthesis and sugars. And uh, they work more in the leaf portion of the plant than anything else. Um, if you add Epsom salt, which is basically magnesium uh, sulfate, um, you will tend to get a lot of uh, you'll tend to get a lot of green growth as well, uh, but but you won't get the green growth that you would if you added potassium. Uh, potassium is is crazy. It's like steroids for for your plant to produce uh, the the chlorophyll, which is what makes them green. Um, so there's there's other things that make a plant green, but you but you just you gotta you gotta um, pick the lesser two evils, I guess, because uh, whereas you can get all of them in one in one uh, giant bag of fertilizer, or you can go out and buy Epsom salt just for that one purpose. Uh, so it's all about saving money and saving time. They'll both work. Um, but another thing that uh, another way of being able to see that you have a potassium deficiency is the edge of the leaves. Um, if the edge of the leaves are curling under and are brown and brittle and dying, you generally do have a potassium deficiency. And you'll see this a lot with cucumbers. Uh, I don't know why, and uh, that's one of the things I just don't know. Uh, because, well, I, I don't know everything. But uh, it seems like cucumbers have a very hard time taking in potassium. And, and so generally you'll get the really brittle edged uh, leaves, they're, they're still a healthy plant, um, but you're, you're just lacking the, uh, the potassium in the soil and the potassium in the plant, so you'll get the brittle leaves and the, uh, the brown dying leaves, which obviously is shock to the plant. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily hurt the plant as much as it weakens the immune system uh, for something that can hurt the plant, and it also will take back on the surface area of the leaf that produces photosynthesis and energy uh, for the plant. So that is all NPK. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed, hopefully you guys have really learned something, and hopefully you guys will be able to troubleshoot something in your garden, because like I said, uh, these are all common symptoms of the NPK deficiencies and what they will do in your garden. So. Hopefully you'll take them, hopefully you'll take them into your garden, and you will be able to troubleshoot your problems so you don't have to feel bummed when you can't find the answers uh, that you're looking for on someone else's YouTube channel or some book or a website. So I thank you for watching, and as always, this is your techie gardener reminding you to get techie with it.